I hope not gamer here. Today we're going to be taking a look at my rather old gaming PC of years gone by. It needs a good clean out. I'm going to pop it open, stick a few bits and bobs in there that I've salvaged off the current Knots PC that I no longer need and repurpose this as my multimedia machine. So let's pop this open and see just how filthy the bloody thing is on the inside, guys, shall we? Hmm. A long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, this was clean. Months and months and years of dust and dirt and years. Now for those grotty fans, look at that. Years of dirt. Beautiful stuff. Let's get these cleaned up. And for the muck and dust out of the housing. And that's the side panel all cleaned. Nice and shiny, looks like a pair of rabbit eyeballs, yes. Let's take a look inside the front panel now. That's going to be filthy. There we go, off you come. Wow! Alright! That is disgusting! That's Gamer has a small colony of space weevils living inside his PC, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to need a bit of a spruce, isn't it? And this guy is just beautiful, isn't he? Definitely needs a good bit of TLC. Very, very fluffy. Oh, yes, not scare me, you dirty, dirty man. Check out how furry this one is. Lots of bits of dead me in there, bits of skin, and nasty, nasty stuff. Man, this thing's so dusty, I've started choking about to put a mask on, it's disgusting. Much better, nice and clean, with lots and lots of flipping dust everywhere. So that's the front panel all nice and clean-ish. I'm not too sure why I put the DVD drive in the second one down, but I think we'll move that. Much better. Now all that dust is settled, it's time to check out the inside of the machine. As you can tell, it's a bit of a mess. I hastily put a power supply in it when I was upgrading um, the new knots PC. I needed to strip some pieces from this that were still better than what were in it. So we need to get all the stuff out of here, clean it all out and get everything rearranged because there's too many cables and at the moment I think I've only got one drive in there. So let's strip that down and clean it up. Here we have my dusty old GTX 1060 which got me through a lot of gaming now I put this back in when I first got the new knots PC as I salvaged my 1660 for that 
since I've got my RTX card in there now, we'll get this guy removed and drop in my 1660 when we're done. He's a dusty old fellow, but what a card. It's a bit of a dusty mess in there. It's an old board, but it looks like I can still get an M2 drive in there. Which would be nice at some point. We do have another hard drive. Don't know what storage size we've got. And plenty of dust, so we've got plenty of memory in there too. I can't remember how much is in there, I think we've got a 16 gigabyte. 4 gigabyte of sticks. So let's continue our cleaning spree. Now this should be fun. I want to take the CPU fan off and repaste the CPU and clean this out. I pop the pins and this will not come away. Oh methinks I clocked this one very high when I used to use it because that is solid and I used it a lot. And that is naughty. I obviously was new when I was doing this or didn't know how badly I was overclocking. As if we can see, it's gone rock solid on the edge there. The last piece. Jeez. So let's get that cleaned up and repasted as well. Poor little CPU, man. That looks rather sorry, doesn't he? Let's get, let's get him out. Without a doubt, my friend, you need a good clean and a bit of TLC. Let's just pop you down somewhere really safe. Yeesh, like a sticky dust. Perhaps I used too much thermal paste and it's just used out, but. Made a horrible mess on there. So let's now try and get this off here. Hopefully it's not baked on too badly. It doesn't look that bad. Dirty, my hands have got just cleaning the dust out of the machine. I've, I've washed them several times, man. It just keeps attracting the filth. There we go. A very old Core i5 4460. It did me proud for a long time. It still does some good gaming now. Lovely and clean, ready to reinsert in our machine. There we go. So that's him done. Now let's have a look at the CPU cooler. This guy's on a hard time, so let's get this nasty, crusty stuff scrubbed off of you. Doesn't look like I've ever. <laughs> I 
I've ever repasted this at all in, in, its, in its lifetime. Where's it all coming from? It looks clean. It looks clean. But it's not. So I'm happy with him now. I need to get all the dust out of there and clear this, clean this shroud. He must somehow be able to remove him from his housing. That is sharp. Ah! Very sharp and very, very, very dirty. I'll clean all that out. Cool, we now have one nice clean heat spreader, so we'll pop him to one side and check out our disgusting, dank, dirty, dusty fan. Give that a quick brush down. That's it, Rolf, get all that dust down. Get it all out. You know, knock the camera around. Twat it and stuff. Get in there. Now we can reassemble our fan. You seriously have to watch your fingers on this. Lovely, back into position and I still have all my fingers. Perfect. So he's all looking lovely and clean. Let's bring the computer back in, get some thermal paste on the CPU, plop it on, and that's the job done there. So now the CPU is repasted and cleaned, let's move on to my dodgy wiring job that I did when I originally built this. What was I thinking running the cables up the front when I could have trailed them up the back of the case? So let's start moving these. So it's going to feed underneath where the GPU is going to go and up the back, tucked around inside instead of down the front where it was before, where it was on view. It doesn't matter because the case isn't transparent, but I want to make it look as neat as possible. So the CPU is done, the case wiring is done. Let's see what else we can jig around. I know why I put the CD drive in here because the cable for the audio is not as long as the others and I had to feed it just through the case panel there to give myself enough length for the cable to reach. So the CD drive remains in the second bay, and that's why we've done that. So after all the effort I put into cleaning the case fans, I looked around in my box of goodies and found the case fans removed from the brand new Knox PC in, uh, in lieu of putting the Corsair ones in. So we're gonna wire all these in instead. It should be a little neater as well. Um, but yeah, we go, we've wasted a bit of time cleaning those other fans. So let's get those removed and plonk these in the case as well.
now we've got the two on the chassis, let's get the two on the side panel. The only problem I have using new fans is I won't be able to use the on and off button on the outside of the case as the interface is slightly different but to be fair they were always on anyway so this shouldn't make a difference it just makes the button on the outside redundant. That's the side panel changed, a lot more minimal, got rid of a lot of stuff, looks okay. Let's move on to the next bit. Next up, let's slap some drives in this now, everything's wired in. So the fan's wired into the case and I've wired in the colour changing button as well, which means when you press reset the machine, the fans will change colour instead of resetting the machine. You lose a function, but you gain a function. So what we need to do now is slap some drives in. So what I managed to salvage was an old DVD drive, so we'll use that again. I've managed to find in there also an SSD with a slightly broken connection, which still works, but the connection, see the plastics come away there, so let's find some way of safely putting him in, because I want to use that to boot the OS. I've managed to also find inside there a big fat old hot drive, quite a heavy one. Oh, look at that, 160 gigabytes, it's a big boy, so we can get some ROMs on there or whatever for emulating. I've also had a scratch around in uh, the not to care bin of stuff, so this is going to be right Frankenstein machine if we can get it going. I've managed to find a laptop hard drive which looks like it should hook straight up to everything I've got already, so that should be fun to play with as well. And uh, if that DVD drive's having trouble, we've got this knackered old laptop one we can stick in as well, but uh, I'd rather not use this because I'm pretty sure it won't work, but hey. Uh. Let's get some drives in this machine. So we want Windows, something, something, if these work. Let's do it. I've had to make a bodge job on this uh, Kingston drive because the plastic housing, the SATA connection has come away, the pins are still fine and the plastic connection is still inside this plug. So if I give for the time being until we've got a new drive to boot from, hopefully this will get us limping by to get Windows installed. Lovely, lovely DIY work there, yes. Mmm, love that electrical tape. Case is all wired in, the drives are all wired in. My main hard drive for Windows has been slightly repaired. So the next step, logically, will be to get the power supply back in, I think. Now we're done hiding all the cables. Well, because I put the new fan system in, it's left me one power connector short, so we're going to go without the CD drive for now and try and install my windows from the last drive. But uh, as it stands, we don't know if these three drives work, so if one's dead, we get the, drive, the DVD drive back. So all I think is left to do now is to plug the, uh, the GPU in. So let's get that 1660 out of the box I've got somewhere. So the card we removed from this originally was my GTX 1060, which considering I've never cleaned it, is a very, very clean card. I'm gonna stick him in a box and put him out of the way in the attic for now. And install my GTX 1660, which will give us a bit more oomph. Nice and clean when I took it out of the old Knotts PC a few months back. So we'll get this in, power it up, and uh, a bit of luck. It should be cool. So 
think I've only to be snagging a little bit of trouble here. I have a 6 pin power plug and an 8 pin connector on this GPU. So we'll try and run it on 6, but I'm pretty sure it won't boot. If it doesn't, it's back to the 1060. It takes a 6 pin, so we'll see if that's going to be sufficient. These power down PCI power cables for the graphics card. So we've got an adequate power to my GPU, which means we're flicking back to the 1060 for now. Sorry, old chum, when we upgrade the power supply in this one, we will return. But now it's back to our rather large friend here. Let me give this a quick brush down. This has never been cleaned. This year's with all the years of no count, so uh, let's just clean her up and stick her in. It's got a very musical heat sink when you're brushing it, isn't it? Let's make some music with the GPU. Right, so one GPU downgrade later, do we get power? No, because we haven't switched it out. Come on, Frankenstein computer, come to life! Good sign, good sign. We have a BIOS screen. New CPU installed, please enter setup and configure the system. Press F1. Yes. Oh, yeah, functioning. So we will go to defaults. F5. Those optimized defaults, yes. Save and exit. Which is F10. Is there an operating system on one of those drives? It looks like there is. <laughs> it looks like there is. A collection of three different types of hard drive and one of those looks like it's booting a copy of Windows. So there we go, we have a booted computer. I can hear those drives furiously coming to life. Let me get myself a mouse, because trackpads suck. We have a very nice Nuts Gamer desktop going up there. I don't have a mouse in, so I can do what I'm doing properly. Right, so I've got stuff on here. Let's see what drives we have. Now I know that works, we'll continue rebuilding the machine and then I'm going to blank it all and see where we are. One of the drives looks like it's been partitioned about four times, which looks like an old Windows install with some recovery partitions which needs to be nerfed. They all look like they're old Windows install drives. The most recent one was the SSD, which I'm going to be using as my C drive. And the other two, one maybe from a laptop, one maybe from a very old desktop, because I'm sure that one's a Windows 7 on. Let's get this rebuilt blank it all and clean slate and see what we can get out of this uh, Frankenstein computer that we've managed to mackle together. Right, so all the drives are working and Windows is on one of them. I've now just got to uh, format the other two, free them up of all their crazy little partitions. So let's just get that done real quick. Well, this is going to take quite a while. It's a tiny drive, and it's taken five minutes to get to 10%. See so you in a bit. So 
So there it is in all its glory, my new old retro PC, which is going to be used predominantly for playing backups of my old retro games. But for the sake of this video, let's jump on the store, load it with some modern software and make this poor machine suffer. This game takes that long to load, I've gone and made a cup of coffee. So that's the new old PC. Surprisingly, it plays more than I thought it would. I only built this for emulation purposes and multimedia, and to be fair, surprised that it plays the games it did. So I'm gonna go away and see what else I can throw at this machine, because unfortunately, it didn't get as punished as I thought it would. I've been NOS Gamer. This has been a computer made of old scrap I had in the loft. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.